think I found that in here. the audio from the fan off. Cool, cool. Is it a good volume level, guys? I have to do this. Hello, is that better? Sorry, guys. We I had to pivot last second because... Uh, my video card was not working with my normal software, so I had to do a last second change. But um, anyway, for those that are joining us, um, this is our live film review. We love doing these things. Uh, we do them every week. Uh, they're brought to you by the Yolo Box, which is an incredible streaming device um, and something we really, really like a lot. We use it around here. Um, so we're going to be doing a little different tonight, um, and, you know, I'm, I'm just going to be trying new things. That's what I'm always going to be doing. So, so I'm looking forward to doing this because when I, <coughs> when we get to do stuff like this, um, every week, uh, to me, this is what makes Wedding Film School special. It's what I think separates what we do maybe from maybe some other people, is th just doing a great job with um, doing critiques, really. Bringing you guys in, and I apologize if I'm a little distracted. I'm just trying to make sure this is going to be working in a dope way. Everything's going to be good, but I promise it will be. But anyway, so we're going to we're gonna give a few people a minute to load in and um, get plugged on. But one of the things I wanted to do tonight was this is just different than maybe what we we normally do um but i was like you know one of the things i hate is when people just tell other people what to do and they don't actually show their own work so i figured it'd be fun to show something that jared and i have worked on um and you guys can rip us to shreds if you want and and i can actually i was gonna critique uh some of my own stuff because i was watching this and i'm like oh i wish i did this better i wish i did that better um i'm gonna start it though and if you guys want to just let me know how the volume level is or, or any of that stuff. That'd be great. But this is a film that uh, we did in August in um, Napa Valley, or Calistoga, California. And um, some of you may have seen it. Maybe you haven't. But uh, it's a good example of kind of making the most of a situation. We did a three, no, four camera live stream at this wedding. It was 110 degrees. Um, and we had to actually <laughs> do the live stream with the laptop sitting on ice because it was so hot at this wedding. Um, the other thing is we shot the whole wedding on Blackmagic on 6Ks, 4Ks, and um, Ursa on all the gimbal stuff, um, all handheld with Cine lenses, um, manual focus, everything. Um, we just were like, let's just do something to torture ourselves. So anyway, this is a, a film we did. It's uh, Our brand is called Huxley Film, so if you want to check it out, and this is a film we did this year, so here it is. their name wrong. Love is one of the most powerful forces in the world. Alexis and Ernest's relationship has always been about the two of them. 
they wrote yeah, their own rules on how to be together. Rules that didn't conform to social norms or always make sense to those on the outside looking in. From happiness. two people together is a lovely mystery. What is clear though after speaking with you and those who love you is that there is a magnetism between the two of you. You both stated that despite all the time and space spent apart, in the back of your minds you both knew that your past would ultimately lead to a life spent with each other. So somebody had a question, is this a destination wedding um, package? And we actually, um, oh, look at that face I paused it on. <laughs> anyway, um, I'll turn my volume up as much as I can. I apologize, guys. I had to switch over our system at the very last minute, and it just, anyway, is that better? This should be better. Anyway, so this was a wedding to Amsterdam James um, that we got. It was destination for us, I guess, because we flew over there. Um, but we, whenever we do anything like that, any destination, and this is just a recommendation I have um, for other people, is we always do three days. Um, so we got there on a Thursday, shot that session in the vineyard, and actually got to hang out with the couple. It's the first time we'd ever hung out with them. And then the next day we did rehearsal, and then the next day we did the wedding. So, yeah, hopefully that helps. Anyway, here we go. I'm not around, but I'm not gone. You bring light and brightness to my darkness. You radiate a warmth around you. You are selfless with your love to me, and for that, among many things, I feel so lucky. I promise you that I will never shy away from any obstacle or challenge that comes our way. To finish this, I'll quote the late great Mitchell Evan Claiborne, who simply left you a note next to your bed that said, I love you the most. Now today, Lexi Bug, I can say with my whole heart and my whole soul, for the rest of our lives Every that we will be the most. There are certain relationships in life that stand the test of time, that stretch across the globe, tangle, intertwine, and there's loyalty and love deeper than you could ever imagine. And ultimately, when you re reunite, it feels like nothing has changed. Those people are woven into your soul. even though you're a little rabble rouser most of the time. I've never seen a man show up for someone the way that you have for Lexi all of these years. <laughs> um, it's really beautiful to watch your best friend be so loved and accepted and supported for exactly who they are. There's a thousand miles of fondness, thousand miles to you. So that's what we do. 
Then the long, annoying ending. Way too much cheesy sound effects. Yeah, so um, I'm going to move this thing. I know this is going to be really inelegant, but I'm going to be moving all around the screen. Let's make it look nice. Um, uh, yeah, so to answer your question, James, uh, I edit that film. Um, that's just... I like to, for those, what I mean, I don't edit many weddings on the year. I actually started as an editor. That's where I kind of began my career in you know, just anything. I was actually a Final Cut Pro 7 certified editor, but <laughs> when that was a thing. But anyway, a couple of interesting things about this wedding. First of all, the, the most obvious interesting thing about this wedding is just this pool that... <laughs> So this pool they actually installed like three days before the wedding. This house was like not close to finished. And um, well, this was actually done in Resolve, guys. I All our uh, Huxley weddings I do in uh, Resolve. Um, but anyway, so we did th this is just this crazy pool um, that they is built out of a, actually a shipping container. And they just put it in there. The, and so, and the actual like when you go through like, when we did this little segment here with the art, so the house was filled with like priceless art. And so we wanted to find a way to include it in the film. And that was a big deal to them. And so this is what I'll tell you about wedding filmmaking. And this is why I wanted to bring this up. All that art, all those posts, that was a combination of in-camera whips, in-camera zooms, and then also post zooms, all that art. But anyway, the house was filled with this and What's interesting when you think about wedding films is like, what am I making for these people? Am I making something dope and sexy? Which, yeah, we want to make a sexy piece of art that, you know, makes these people look awesome, makes people think they're awesome. I also spelled their name wrong. That's really dumb. Don't worry, the deliverable doesn't have the mistake, but I uploaded the wrong one. Like an idiot. But anyway, um, that house that we did this entire thing in burned down like two months later in all the fires in... Um, that are in, that were in uh, Calistoga, Napa area. And, and it's really sad. And when you think about like, what am I really doing as a wedding filmmaker? Like, you know, you we forget that we're making this, you know, it's really a family heirloom where these people are getting something that, and, and like we preserved a memory. It's the one time, it, all that art burned down, that house burned down. You know, and so, I don't know, this is what we do. There's all kinds of mistakes in here that I noticed. Uh, when you're manually focusing like this, um, you know, uh, yeah, you, you'll be able to watch it later, Franco. It'll be up there. You know, a f manually focusing, I miss focus a lot. Jared missed focus a lot. The other thing I would say is one of the things you'll notice in a film like this is a lot of the gimbal work, which is done on, um, like, it's done on the uh, Ursa, and like it's just not perfect. Like this little rotation right coming up right here. Uh, maybe I missed it. There's just a lot of gimbal work that's not perfect, and I would say when you're looking at work like this, um, I want it to be perfect. So I don't know that we would actually. I don't know if you would actually um, take, I'm not going to do <laughs> probably Ursa, even though we really wanted to get that 4K uh, 120. Um, yeah, it probably wasn't worth it with the weight. It was way too heavy. And so there's a lot of issues with this film. Um, the other thing is we luckily had a wine cellar. And so when I, I wanted to point something out to you guys, it's more of a tip. When you're working um, weddings where the weather's not ideal, um, always having a backup plan for your portrait sessions um, when we looked at this portrait session, we looked and we're like, how do we find somewhere to go? We lit this room. We always try to, on one of these, do a specialty, we call it a signature session with a couple where we bring them somewhere that we light. And we it's only 15 minutes or whatever, but it looks awesome and we use it to spice up the film. Um, we say it's outside of time, it's non-linear, it's a piece we can put in there. Um, and then of course, like the vibe wise is like, this is a wedding, man, these are just people. So you're kind of going through it's their story. There was a lot of tragedy before this wedding. And so we wanted to kind of encapsulate the people in the film. 
you know, and then of course at the end it just goes full on party. So anyway, this is our film. This is what we do. So if you're wondering like, why should I listen to this guy? Not to say that this was the best film ever, but we, you know, feel free to critique it. Tell me what you liked. Tell me what you didn't like. But I, I always like to put our own work out there and show you like, hey, I'm not above just showing you what I do. And, um, and maybe if you like what I do, maybe it'll help you understand when I give the critiques that I'm going to give. So anyway, let's get into the film. Um, so anyway, we're going to be doing a couple films tonight. I think about four films. Maybe we could do five. That would be cool. So I'm going to open up my spreadsheet so I can get all the names right because I don't want to have the wrong names up here. Um, but while we're doing that, I'm going to just mention tonight's show is brought to you by the YOLO box. This is the YOLO box. Um, actually, I don't think I have the link in there, Jared. So if you can add the link into the description of this uh, live stream in the YouTube studio, that would be great. But this is YOLO box in a little bit. The link will be up there. Um, as you can see, we use it because it's got fingerprints all over it. <laughs> but this thing is great because it allows you to do two camera HDMI live streaming. It has all the um, ways of connecting with the internet you could want. 4G has got ethernet. Um, it's just a really, really, really great device. And uh, oh, it's got Wi-Fi too, of course. If you're looking to add live streaming to your wedding filmmaking business, this is one of the things I would really encourage you to take a look at. It's also got this beautiful display, which you can watch your films on and do even do switching on. So it's great. So check it out because I think it's one of the things that um, I think a lot of people can add a lot of revenue to their business if they were able to do this. All right. So let's look at our films. So the first film we're going to be looking at is by Santiago Guy. Um, Santiago Guy Films, I think is what. And so he said um, it's a Sony a7 III, um, a couple primes, 85, 22 millimeter. Uh, no drones, no gimbals, no sliders, monopod, small tripod, mainly handheld, very minimalist. Um, and so let's check out your packages because I think this matters. So very, very reasonable. Um, I'm, I have, after looking at this, I'm going to have, I've seen your film and I'm going to have something to say about this. So we have Wedding Crashers 2000, which is a full ceremony, five hours of coverage, his packages next one's fools rush in 2500 six minute highlight video all day coverage mamma mia is package number three thirty five hundred dollars six minute highlights full ceremony speeches this is like all the linear cuts plus the highlight edit um 12 week delivery is listed huh? that's interesting um cinderella package he's got 4300 eight minute highlight film a teaser trailer involved. Um, I will say this, um, Santiago, I like your package progression. I think you could be more expensive because of your work, you'll see his work soon. But um, his package progression is nice. Um, all right. So let's check out your work because I think people are going to dig it. It's good stuff. All right, here we go. So this is Santiago guy. Here we go. Oops. I lose my breath whenever I see you. You stole my heart. What is it that you do? My life was great till you added colors. Like the moon needs the sun, we don't care about the others. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
I can't wait. I'm very so excited. Good. Everything looks gorgeous. I know. They did such a great job. Yeah. Are you so it's excited? It's finally here. It's here. It's, it's here. happening. It's the day. I know. <laughs> I'm so excited. So here's the thing I noticed when I was watching this uh, film um, as a critique, but it also might be something that you can't do um, anything about. So I don't want to say it's a criticism, but it is a thing. If you could, maybe it'd be better. But, um, you're just, this is a very windy area. Uh, I wonder where this wedding was, by the way, if, you, is it, if it's in Miami or whatever, or if it's in the Caribbean. But um you can hear these palms just rustling like crazy the whole entire time. Um, and, um, and it just, it's very distracting. And I wonder if there was something that could be done about it maybe. And I will say, I agree with Jared. Um, when I see this film and, and, and before I say anything, um, the color is beautiful. Um, really really good um and i and i've seen the whole film and so the shooting i mean i think you are like if you if you can get some more sexiness and a little more pace and just bring a little more life into your films maybe even get an editor that you hire um man i, I think you are on the cusp of like being double your price but i think there's a lot of audio, for instance, even parts of the audio that are just not in, not overly necessary. You don't need to include that much audio. And I think like that's just a thing a lot of people do. I get it. Uh, it's not my personal style. I know some people want to include a lot of audio, but but when I look at it, it's like, man, um, you're a really good shooter. But then there's just little little things that really keep it from being like a totally tight project. And I, I want to include this film guys, because um, I want to give this guy some tips because when you see someone who's got like this good color um, instincts and this good shooting skills to shoot this handheld and all this stuff and all they need is like a little bit more of polish on the edit. I, like this is the stuff that puts you over the top when it comes to being a wedding filmmaker and, and you're really close. And I, I just wanted to say that even though we have, I have a little criticisms here and there, I really think um, you're really close to being a uh, next level. So let's, let's keep going. Your joy to be falling through on my best yes. See, as Lewis said, to love is to be vulnerable. That love is a deep unity maintained by the will, deliberately strengthened by habit and reinforced by the grace that both partners ask and receive from God. In his writings, he explains that being in love is the explosion that may have started us, but love alone won't sustain us. I vow to always choose you in the quiet space that settles after the explosion. Forever admiring what you are now and trusting in who you will become, I vow to always respect and honor you. To share in your joy and stand by you during your trials. To encourage you in love and in life. To always seek out passion and adventure. As you can see, the audio um, in this is just not, it's just not up to par when you have images this beautiful and then you have um, 
just that noise in the background. I mean, to me, sorry, I had to move my thing, by the way. To me, if I was editing this film, um, I like to try to cover the mistakes and the problems of the day. I think that's important when you're doing an edit. And to keep that in mind when you're shooting, like if I would have shot this, I probably would have been like, eh, my audio is going to be crap. That thing that was so loud. Um, yeah, and I agree, Jared. The greens are, oh, that's beautiful. I love it. And like, I want to steal some of your color ideas, to be honest. But I would have, like, I am so distracted by this now noise with all these images and all this slow stuff. I know you said no gimbal. My opinion is that this would be better with a little bit of gimbal. Just establishing shots on the gimbal. Um, and then, you know, I, I probably would have just tried to downplay the ceremony audio a little more because it's very distracting to me. And it's not good. Adventure. To listen first, always remembering it's more important to be understood than to be right, and to hold the space for us when there are no words to fill the void. On a fundamental level, I believe that we were destined for one another. You are always mine and I yours. I will never be able to express my gratitude for your patience and consistent nature. <laughs> Thank you for intentionally encouraging my strengths and forgiving my faults. As I look back on our years of life and our paths, I stand here today only able to thank God for always going before us. I will never finish falling in love with you. I love you more. glasses. I'm good. I'm, I'm good for right now. For right now. It might be short-lived though. Okay, look at this. <laughs> Heather, I'm so thankful to be standing up here with you today. This has been a long time coming. I don't think there are many people who get to say that they've married their high school crush these days, but, but I've really lucked out. So I got a little bookmark here. It's a small little flip-flop. So I don't remember the exact context. Okay. So he says, I got a little bookmark here, small little flip flop. Um, and I, I'm just wondering, again, there's like a lot of superfluous audio. Like there is so much of this audio from the ceremony and I'm really just wanting it to be over. Um, and because I want to get to like, Get me to the party. Get me to the couple. Make me feel a little more. Give me, let me just live in this moment a little more. And, and I'm finding that it's just a little, little too much. And there are just a lot of like superfluous lines that you can remove. And like the difference between luxury wedding filmmaking, high dollar stuff, stuff that has polish is like pacing, pacing, pacing. You got to keep that pacing. And it doesn't need to be this high crazy thing where you were watching like a Henry Martin's film and it's all hype. But like good pacing is really the difference between a good film um, and a great film. And I, and I think this lacks pacing. It has too much stuff that doesn't really add to the story. And it takes away from the beautiful imagery. But when Heather was moving up to Ocala back in high school, she took this little flip-flop charm off her phone and gave it to me. I was back in like 2006, I believe. I know it's a little bit silly, but I've held on to it all these years. I think of all the, well as I call them, first dates that we went on when we were just friends. I was always dreaming of that one day. Well, every day is that day for me. I don't believe he's in the chat, by the way. Um, this is my gut on this. My gut is that we are getting the audio from that groom's lav mic, and that is why her audio sounded the way it did. So it doesn't seem like he got a feed or there was problems with the audio. Um, in which case, like I said, I wouldn't have put it in the film. I wouldn't have put that much of it in the film if there was that many issues. But that's my guess what's happening. I love you more than words can express. You truly are my best friend. I vow to be by your side until our dying days. I couldn't be happier to be able to call you my wife. Wow, way to outdo me, guys. <laughs> check, check. We don't care about the others. Hi, Franco. How you doing, buddy? So can I ask you, Franco, um, this sequence right here, um, this sequence right here, I wanted to see more of this. I'm wondering if you could have included a lot of it, too, in the beginning. 
Um, just to make the film have a little more sizzle. Um, I like that you took them out, you lit it, and all this stuff. And it's, is this their first dance, or is this like a, a portrait session um, right here? Um, but yeah. But anyway, I like I like that you took them over here and shot. And I would have liked to see maybe a little more of this footage right here throughout the film to make it a little more, a little more spicy. That's the So jitter, you, I would have gotten out. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us this evening. Um, for those of you that don't know me, my name's Nikki or Nicole. Um, I've been friends with Heather for about 16 years now. So I just wanted to say, Heather, I'm so proud of you. I'm proud to call you my, my best friend. <laughs> um, you're truly a beautiful person inside and out. Phil, I promise to remind Heather why she chose you um, when uh, your motocrossing drives her insane. Um, and Heather, I promise to help. Um, Phil I'm going to show you guys. Let's look at this foreground right here because this is this is a great, great, great use of right there. Is that through a cup or what's going on there? Um, uh, but. Shooting stuff like this really, and it's just, this is making the song even more painful to me because I'm looking at, your instincts are great. You're shooting, like people, a lot of people just miss opportunities like this to shoot through a glass or something like this. I don't, I think it's in camera and it's just awesome looking. Um, it, it's awesome. So good, good, good eye. And like when you're at, when you're experienced and you're a great shooter, you're gonna look for opportunities like this to take something boring and average, and and, and turn it into something that I, someone wants to stop and look at. So great job there, Franco. And Heather, I promise to help um, Phil pick out every gift for you that you've already picked out for yourself. Okay. <laughs> um, so I'm usually supposed to give some sort of relationship advice um, at this point, but um, I'm 29 and I'm single, so it's not gonna happen. Okay, let's look at um, this is not good good color. <laughs> the rest of the film is awesome color, but this this her skin tone is just not doing it for me. There's so much pink in all the skin tone with the magenta. And I feel like it needs to be toned down a little bit. And I, I don't think it's and, – and, and the lighting thing, like, we all know we're supposed to light speeches. We also know that these things just happen. People just walk anywhere they want. This is how the wedding world works. So it's hard for me to get too critical with people when they're when, – when crap happens at weddings. It sounds good. I think it would be basically fine, and they're going to love including it. But I would have tweaked those skin tones a little because they're, they're a little Martian-y. <laughs> but it is with great honor um, that I raise a glass to you, Heather, and to you, Philip, um, and to Happily Ever After. <laughs> hey, dude. Really good stuff. So I'm going to give you some feedback. And this is, if you are, a, if you're a good shooter, um, it can be hard sometimes to become a great brand. And you are a good shooter and, and like really good shooter. One of the best we've had um, on the show that has submitted a film. And, and I really feel like, A, you... Either need to go, like if you go watch, go watch some high polish wedding filmmaking, Sculpting with Time, some people, um, even La Rev, people like that who are doing high dollar wedding films. Um, I don't know if you know, like in your area, Diego Stewart, um, because you have a, a lot of great instincts as a shooter. And actually, sorry to Frank, I just saw your comment, Franco. Were you shooting this whole film, Auto White Balance? Yeah, Franco, you're just, you're a natural if this is your 11th film. So so what I encourage you to do is go watch some of those filmmakers I mentioned and kind of look at how they pace stories. This film needed two songs, first of all. Um, there was no getting ready footage, 
even though I'm not crazy about that, I did. I think it could have used a little more of an intimate look. And also, when you're shooting handheld, I really think um, one of the things handheld shooters sometimes struggle with is they don't really get in there, especially prime people, people who are like, oh, I use my prime. Um, it, actually, if you want to look at who shoots incredible handheld footage, um, I would go to check out um, Forged, Forged in the North. Um, if I don't know. That, I probably didn't pronounce that good. Jared, if you can let him know, Forged in the North. Go check them out. They do a lot of handheld stuff. And he's like in, he's out, he's in, he's out. He's moving. Handheld shooting, you got to really, especially with primes, you have to create a sense of movement by actually moving your body. Um, and I think getting that in there would, would help you a lot. But like shots like this, this is a butt shot. I didn't really like to include this here. Um, a lot of this stuff... I'm just, I was just feeling like it got this beautiful, beautiful intro and all this beautiful, like, I want to go back to this shot that I just love. Let me find, if I can find it. Um, the, yeah, and if you're, so I would say learn your Kelvins, please. Um, we, it's one of the first things we are making our team learn. And this will, if you are a person that shoots auto white balance, uh, like look at right there. Ugh, darn it, this thing, this scrub bar stinks, guys. I apologize for just bouncing all over the place. Um, the greens in this are incredible. Um, do you mind ask if telling me what you, uh, what was this, what color profile or how? You, and, but anyway, there's a lot of good stuff, a lot to like here. Um, and I really, really think um, if you can figure out some pacing, if you go watch some films, like just bring a little more of that sex appeal, even like the handheld thing, like get a little weight on that camera and bring that handheld movement, create the dynamics with how you shoot. And I think you're going to like it a lot better. Um, I really love this, what you did. And I think um, the song is so boring. And if you're like, I'm not good at picking songs, um, get an editor. I mean, I'll tell you this, um, someone who can help you just take what you do and take it to the next level. And then with that signature session you did, you pulled in and did them a dance. That was awesome. Do that. But like, get in there, show, like make them actually do some stuff with you, make them kiss, take them somewhere. Like try to get the couple, draw the relationship out of them, especially if they're willing to go do a little side thing. Um, but yeah, you're, you're good, man. Um, and it's really about, it's not about what you shot, and it's not about how you even covered the day. It's about what you chose to show and how. So you're a great shooter. Just maybe pare it down a little bit, pick up the pace, and I think you're on to something really good, man. So I cannot wait. Show me some more films. Once you kind of tweak and give it a little more, show me some more of your films um, because I want to see how you progress because um, you're, you're exciting. You're a good shooter. All right. So, what do we got for this next film? Um, this next film we have, I, I think this is uh, Fitzgerald Films again. So, let's check this out, guys. Um, you're in here, right? Let's see. Um, where are Fitzgerald uh, Films? Where are you from again? Where are you located? I always like to, I always like to know that because it helps with pricing a lot. So this is um, wedding in June 2019, or um, sorry, in January. Sorry, so it was the first he filmed, in it, so this was shot in January. Um, filming at his church. Um, it was a Catholic wedding, and the bride and groom were focused on the sacrament and the marriage over the good party. Filmed mainly on a Canon 80D, second shooter shot on Sony. Um, he said he had some issues matching colors, so we will see if that is true. Um, and, um, sorry. And, uh, yeah. Um, they, this is a, an interesting part of the film, just so you guys know. Um, he said that, the couple lost a grandparent and a close friend the week before the wedding. Um, and so when you, there's like some parts where it feels a little dark, um, but I, I think it's very appropriate. It makes sense. And 
if you're a wedding filmmaker, you have to understand that like you're trying to capture these moments for couples and including things like this, like having, it makes them almost feel like those people were a part of the wedding day. And so I, I think that's a, that's really cool that you were able to do that. And so anyway, um, he said this is his fourth for his his business and uh he's done about 10 for a couple other people it's a four minute highlight film with speeches and dances and it was about fifteen hundred dollars so um i mean we've got some talented people in here who can really end up being charging a lot more so let's let's check out the film oh sorry guys i keep forgetting to switch the audio over this thing does not preserve your audio settings when you go between films. There you go. It is truly a delight and a privilege to be with all of you this afternoon as we come together under unique circumstances and at the close of a roller coaster of a week for many of you, to witness Luke and Laura join themselves in holy matrimony. We made it five years yesterday, and I honestly can't believe it. The length of time you've been with me and the circumstances in which we first met, it's all unbelievably and totally unexpected. I've been blessed with so much in my life, a loving family, a good education, supporting friends. <laughs> However, I think the best blessing that God ever had in store for me was you. I'd like to say that I prayed every day for my future spouse before I met you, but that would only be a lie. But I can tell you that every day after I met you, I thank God that he gave I like that. Yeah, I always like the, the like look up thing. Um, did you ask her to do that? Is that is that something you asked her to do? You did you like direct this moment? Um, one of the things that we love here at Wedding Film School, and hopefully is 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 introducing movement foreground, and I think there was a lot of really nice movement um, and foreground, and um, sorry, my wife is texting me about the Peloton we got delivered. Um, anyway, movement foreground. And then also, I like that you directed this moment um, and, you pro and you prompted them. This is a prompting people. Um, oh, geez. Is this thing breaking up for you guys? Are you guys still here? Prompting people, giving these kind of um, prompts is actually pretty high level filmmaking. And so doing this, I think... Um, shows that you have some skill you got and and it's it's one of those things that takes a lot of experience so so good job there give me someone as special as you i hope to be able to continue thanking him for giving me you for many many years to come what i really kept coming back to for a topic was simple joy <laughs> and the absolute joy I have in my heart today. If you saw me walking down the aisle, you're probably thinking, oh man, Tim is smiling bigger than we've ever seen him. I was trying not to smile so big. That, that was... I like, uh, I like that you actually... I'm going to go back a little. So this is a shot that's not great. It's good, but not great. But because of the inclusion of... Um, the audio um, prompt where he says, I was smiling big, right? I'm smiling big. And then you can see right here. Oh, look, he's smiling big. You can see him right up there. He's smiling big. And I think that's cool, man. You, 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 you've, you've thought through and made this personal. And, and I just want to give you kudos for that as well. Although um, not in focus. So, you know, try that focusing on the bride. Although maybe your other shot was in focus, maybe. But regardless, moving on. I was trying not to smile so big. That, that was... Sorry, I was I did, not to nitpick, but I got to nitpick a little. Um, this is a big thing when you are editing. Um, when you're editing, you can just push it back a little bit, and you don't have to show this. I was this. trying not to smile so big. That little camera move at the end, 
Um, I would have trimmed that out. That, that was <laughs> truly coming right from, from the depths of, of my soul and the joy I have for the two of you and the ceremony and the sacrament that we share today. Honestly, it feels like yesterday when I first saw you. Little did I know that the time between yesterday and the today of us getting married would be the happiest I've ever I would have probably, I would have probably not included. Hey, I probably wouldn't have just included that shot. I would have probably, this is a, if you can free yourself up from having to tell stories in a linear way, you will tell better stories because this dude being silly right here is awesome. By the way, he looks like Gronk in my opinion. Um, um, but right here, let's see. Are you? Little did I know that the time. The shakes right there at the beginning of the frame. Um, I would have not included those. Um, I would have just moved the shot forward, shift, T shifted a little bit. But also, this shot right here, I would have probably put it later in the film because I'm not averse to doing things in a non linear fashion. And I think everybody, that means just going in chronological order with uh, first they got ready, then they got married, then they had a. Um, it's a great way to make a lot of films really fast and to make, um, and couples are fine with it. But I think sometimes like including goofy moments when other goofy things are happening, um, the music that's over this, it just would make it maybe have a little more impact. Um, but I think if you move this shot a little and not included the little jitters, I think it would be better. In between yesterday and the today of us getting married would be the happiest I've ever been. Yes, we've had ups and we've had downs, but that's life. A life that today I will lay down for you. I think that is my favorite part in our readings today. What greater love is there than to lay down one's life? Okay, this is gonna be one of my pet peeves in a wedding film. Um, this today. Okay. When when you have people kissing and they half kiss and they awkwardly fake kiss like they, these people miss this kiss like just don't include it just show the good ones um and keep a lookout for it because you we're trying to show these people in their best possible light um and sometimes sometimes that can be hard but you, you're just trying to show like when people aren't like looking awkward um and kissing is one of the more awkward things you do. So knowing how to show a kiss and making sure it looks as natural or sexy or whatever you're trying to communicate with this kiss and not having people. I guess if it's like really goofy and they're laughing hysterically and they're acknowledging, oh, we missed our kiss, maybe you can include it. But but the weird portrait kisses where they miss it, I, I think you should not include those. At least only include the good part. For a friend. I pledge from this day onward that I will always strive to be the best friend and supporter for you every day. Every day I will lay down my life for you to be the better husband, the better man, one day the better father for our little family. I'm not a fan of seeing that playground in the background. We never really had a bad moment. <laughs> until like this week. I still don't have the words to articulate how I'm feeling and thinking about the death and also the massive celebration we're about to have. The one thing I know is that you've been a constant through all of this. I don't think I have jitters yet, but I wish you could be here in case the anxiety and nerves hit. Luke and Laura, you no longer live mm, out of out of focus. Are you using autofocus or are you rolling focus? Uh, are you rolling autofocus when people walk down the aisle? Sorry, rolling manual focus when people walk down the aisle. Do you mind? Um, because if you have autofocus, you should use it. If not, you should um, just practice rolling focus. Um, one of the things that people, when they don't manually focus a lot, when you're shooting at an angle on an aisle, the actual space or the speed of the walking actually exponentially increases when it's not, if someone's just walking straight at your camera, it'll be 
the same exact speed of rolling focus, but when they're actually walking at an angle, you need to ramp up your speed because they'll get towards the camera at actually faster and faster and faster or slower and slower depending on the angle. So rolling focus, walk, someone walking straight towards you is, is hard. Doing it at an angle when they're walking like that can be even harder. So that's just a thing to practice, but you really want to hit focus on these groom shots. They matter a lot. Live your lives solely with regard for yourself. But rather, having united yourselves in marriage, you will take on a unified identity. Is this guy on your team? Oh, that's a girl. She looks like a volunteer art teacher. What the heck is she wearing? <laughs> but rather, having united yourselves in marriage, you will take on a unified identity. Living for, sacrificing for. Oh no, blue dress. Ugh, you gotta fix that blue dress, bro. Um, yeah, you can't have a blue dress. Um, yeah, I mean, you know that. that. That's that's easy enough to tweak. You gotta get a white dress. Well, I always tell everyone, white dress. Loving the other. But within this identity taken on by the two of you, there is a mission. Your mission is the eternal salvation of your spouse and your family. Now, if that sounds like a large task, perhaps it does, then look no further where you are today. Her dress is beautiful, by the way. I really like her dress. Surround you. And if I may be so bold, they're ready to support you in good times and in tough times. And yeah, I think white dress over the rest is looking weird. In that shot, so short. That's my opinion. The first time, Mr. and Mrs. Lucas and Laura Tucker. Good. That was a good gimbal shot. That was a good gimbal shot. Let's go back and look at that. Yeah, and so in, in terms of white dress over the rest looking weird, this is what I'll tell you. When you're dealing with combination white balances, um, when you're dealing with combination white balances like that, where you got the blue and the orange, whatever people are going to, A, your subject is what you need to white balance. So when you have a person where whatever your eyes are going to be drawn to is what you need to really make sure is white balanced properly. And because people aren't going to look at that background, they're going to look at that dress right away. So that that's what matters. But anyway, this is a great gimbal shot. I just wanted to point it out. Um, good, good operating technique you, you did a great job it looks awesome it's nice and wide which is cool because it shows out the church um and their family and friends so good shot good job i like i like including the audio there we're so excited to continue to watch your story and how it unfolds it's really such a beautiful love story I look back on all these memories that we've had, and I really can't imagine the two of you apart in these memories, and they've always been together for me. And, um, to, to... Did, you, did you light this um, right here? Did you light this right here? Man, that's a tough situation. Um, that's tough. I can tell. Yeah, I can tell this is a tough situation. It... The pink skin is a little much for me, but um, if you could, if you could have asked them to maybe move a little bit and backlight them or whatever, I would say do it. But if not, I do understand these are tough situations that um, they happen at weddings, guys. They happen, so we know it doesn't look the best. You got to include it. It's meaningful to the couple. Um, in this situation, what would I have done? If I knew this was gonna look bad. I probably would have shot very low aperture on a long lens, really punched in and tried to just blur out that thing. And I probably would have shot him from the other side and not against that door. But, you know, this is me knowing nothing about the thing because uh, that looks like a tough situation. And to Laura and to their love. Cheers, everybody. Nice little edit. Nice little ring shot.
Yeah, if you guys didn't see, Bobby has a new video today on how to shoot awesome ring shots. Um, and yeah, it's a very cool video. But hey, there's a lot of good stuff in there, man. And um, I will say this. I don't like your font. It's just personal opinion. I would prefer to see it all caps, though. Um, I, I might like it, actually, if it was all caps. I this is just my opinion. I just feel like it looks more high end. Anyway, um, yeah. So this is good stuff. Um, I really liked it. I think I wanted to actually. Um, I'm gonna send you something right now. I'll put it in the chat. So this is a great resource for anyone who is looking to match multiple cameras. Um, this is a LUT pack called Leaming LUTs. Leaming LUTs are designed to match multiple cameras to a Rec. 709 look. So if you're dealing with like two different camera ma manufacturers, you'll go look at their LUTs. They're, they're not the cheapest LUTs, um, but they are very effective when you're trying to match cameras. That is like what they're for. They are not for creating a cool look. They are for getting you to Rec. 709, and they are for when you're shooting on a GoPro and a you know a, a DJI drone and a Sony, and then the other guy has a Panasonic. It helps you match them all together. Um, I feel like the film was cold because it was actually cold. Um, I would have liked to see a little more contrast in the colors throughout the film. You know, um, I'm just looking at this is the awkward kiss. Um, and I think some of these shots, um, these are just tough situations. What's up, Matthew? How you doing, buddy? Um, but I think I would have, it just was missing something to me. Um, yeah. So the other thing I was going to say was the ceremony stuff. There's a lot of it and it does not look very good. Like right here, his skin is it looks more pink, by the way, on the interwebs than it does in real life, but it's very pink. Um, and yeah, there's just a lot of stuff where maybe a little bit of polish. Um, overall, though, really good film. You're a good shooter. I, I think you you succeed. What is I always tell people, hey, being a good shooter is the first step. Being a good shooter. Um, I wondered if you could have also, in some of your portrait sessions, maybe gotten a little more intimate and just given us a couple different um, perspectives. And then I feel like um, the film needs maybe a little more B-roll. And I always wonder, I mean, maybe I'm just a filmmaker who just has, I mean, you saw the film I showed you guys at the beginning. I, I, I like films to be on the, have pace. I like them to have pace. And, and when I look at this, um, there's no, like, relief from the seriousness. It's just like, boom, boom, boom. And it was a serious day, so I get the vibe. And I'm just, and like you said, they didn't really have a party. So, so I'm just wondering if maybe we could have brought it to, like, a more romantic place, maybe. If serious, and then maybe including some of a romantic vibe to the song that, that lifted the film a little because the heaviness of those moments that were included, beautiful moments like them reading about that painful, painful thing that happened to them, someone passing away. I think giving it a little lift um, of, you know, love and romance and kind of maybe tweaking the song a little or whatever. I I'm not sure what you could have done there, but I know what I wanted to feel from an emotional standpoint. I wanted a little bit of a lift. And I think when you're doing heavy, heavy stuff like this, I try to take a memory like that and, and, and juxtapose it with something joyful so the couple doesn't walk away from their wedding film feeling sad. But that's just me. It's a challenging situation. So um, I think you did a great job, man. Um, and I think just um, maybe like the, the white balancing things I brought up a few times, working on that, some of the focus stuff, um, you did a good job. So hopefully that was helpful. Yeah, okay. So while we're getting our new film up, I'm just going to remind you guys, the YOLO box. Today's live stream is brought to you by YOLO Live, makers of the YOLO box. 
It's an incredible device. It streams. It switches. It's got Ethernet. It's got 4G. It's got Wi-Fi. It's got everything you need to make about 10 grand or more with your wedding film business just by adding live streaming. You can even get it dirty with your fingers. Uh, no, but seriously, love this thing. We got a link down in the description, and also Jared will put one in the chat. So buy them. Also helps us help support our channel if you buy it through our links. Um, I know everybody's asking you to do that stuff, but if you like what we're doing with Lighting Film School, we're trying to do a lot. We're trying to do like four to five releases a week. We want to be there for you. We want to be the number one resource for wedding filmmakers um, on YouTube, and we want to be there for you. So hopefully you're, you're enjoying what we're doing. But yeah, great job. Great job. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah, so I think I think this is yours, James. If I can ever get it to switch over. Uh, please, just do it. Yeah, there it is. All right, so this is uh, one by James Turner. Um, and yeah, this is a film. Um, wow, how'd you get your camera so high? Just kidding, just kidding. I know I didn't make yours so high. Optimal Focus Media. Um, this is $1,700. So, James, if you can tell me, is, so they paid seventeen plus twenty six hundred dollars for this um, package, or, or did they pay $2,600? Um, so, yeah, it's either $4,300 total or $2,600 total. I'm not sure. Um, but this is... Uh, optimal focus media and yeah this is james turney made this film so so we're gonna check it out here we go Okay, James. I told you I was gonna. I told you I was gonna roast you for this, so I'm gonna roast you for this. Um. Oh shoot. Sorry about the. It went black. Apologize, guys. Um. Yeah, I told you I was gonna roast you for this. Um. But same song as last week. Now, I'm not sure how what your volume is or whatever. I personally would avoid if I wasn't doing 120 weddings a year. Um, I definitely, if I was doing like 15 weddings or whatever, I would probably want to try to use a different song for my couples because then it may, gives. This is business advice. It's it, you want marketing material, right? So you don't want two films with the same song when you're not doing a huge volume. Like we'll use the same song from time to time for our wedding films when. We know we're like, we're not going to show this one. We're, the couple doesn't need to, we're just going to, actually, sometimes if we're not, like, if we know they're never going to be displayed anywhere, like, we don't mind using the same song. But if I didn't have a huge volume and I really needed to be able to show any of my good films, um, I would not use the same song because when you start marketing them, it, it doesn't look good to your next customer. Um, so that's just my feedback. Blue dress, too, by the way. Blue dress. Blue dress. This one is blue. But it's supposed to be white. Take me back, take me back to the days when we were kids. Reaching for something just beyond our fingertips. Hi, beautiful. Hi. So... From the first month that we were dating, I, I'm pretty sure I told my mom I was going to marry you. Who would have thought that it was going to be seven years later? That's a dope shot. Um, good job. Although I would say I would have liked to see that in the slower part of the song and not when that nice little symbol 
the thing cued you up for a sick edit and we kind of just, just kind of slowly but it's a good shot really good shot Promise to always be your motivator. You promise to always be your driver, your chauffeur. You can even change your name to Miss Daisy if you want. But most of all, I promise to always provide love and care for you. I'll try to always put you first, even though I'm slightly hard-headed. But at the end of the day, I just want you to know that I always love you and I always make things work out. Okay, so answer me this, which this isn't a bad thing at all, um, because this is just what people do in wedding films. Was this fake getting ready footage, or was this the real stuff? Did they get ready outside? Um, I, I ask because um, I ask because um, if you are watching this and you're you're thinking like, I don't always have time to get there early or I'm shooting, I'm a solo shooter. I don't have time to go to the groom. Um, okay, great, James. Great. Thank you. This is what professionals do. They fake some getting ready footage outside and it looks fine in the film. It, it, nobody cares. It, and it, the, if the couple's like, oh, it's not real, which I've never had a couple say, by the way. Um, but the next couple doesn't know. And the next couple watching your video who is being marketed to um, wants to know, are you going to cover the groom? And, and also maybe the bride's like, oh, we're getting married 20 minutes apart and you have to drive and you're not able to, you can say, well, I can do this and you can show them the wedding. So good job, James, think it on your feet. Can I just say, this is, I know how this stuff goes, but I just keep looking at that guy's reflection in the glasses and it's just awesome. <laughs> I'm wondering if you get a punched in there and, and shown his friend in the glasses more because it looks awesome. It's cool. Anyway, thank you for letting me have that little talk, James. You gave me a moment. Too long on that shot. husband and wife. From the moment our paths crossed, I knew our relationship would be something special. You have always challenged me, motivated me, and improved me in ways that no other person has done before, and I can honestly say that you have made me a better person. There are so many things that I love about you in this life that we have created together. You are thoughtful, loyal, hardworking, and such a genuine person. Where was this stuff? Where was this stuff? Okay, so um, the portrait session is beautiful. Um, this is just my advice to people in terms of, I'm a, I'm a salesperson. I'm a business person first. I'm a filmmaker, editor, kind of second. At this point, I'm, I'm just become a business person first. And when, I think, by the way, the crickets are fine. I mean, it is what it is. The crickets exist. Um, but James, one of the things I think matters, especially if you're like, this film is good. I'm going to show this film to my couples. Try to get some of your best footage in the first 30 seconds of the film. Um, I always call it a power intro. Give them a nice little power intro to your film where all your best stuff is in there. And people, and I, you know, I hate to say this because then everyone's films will start looking the same. But when I see something like this, I'm like, oh, if someone would have seen this like early in the film... Um, maybe you did a teaser too. If you are, if, if you did a teaser, maybe you're like, I don't need it. I have my teaser. Um, but I like kind of taking my best stuff and front loading my film with some really good stuff so that it works better in the marketing world. But this is good looking stuff. There's a bunch of good looking portrait session. Really pretty. I love how spontaneous you are and how you're always ready for our next adventure. I vow from this day forward to walk with you. 
Hand in hand through life, as your biggest fan, your shoulder to lean on, and your best friend. I promise to always support you and encourage you to fulfill all of your dreams. I promise to always be there to celebrate our success together, mourn our losses together, and pick you up whenever you're feeling down. I promise to create and support a family with you in a household filled with laughter, patience, understanding, and love. I vow not just to grow old together, but to grow together every So I wanted to mention, you said you struggle with not having a chronological film, um, and I get that. So this is how I think about my signature portrait session. There are things I want to do chronologically in the film because they just make sense and, and other things that don't make sense. Like just including people getting ready at the end of, end of the film. Even if you like the shot, it doesn't make sense. I wouldn't do that. Putting tons of dancing. Maybe if you're doing like a little power intro where you have like kind of what we did in the film I showed at the beginning. Um, but when I look at a portrait session, to me, a portrait session exists outside of time. It's a thing that's just a, it's like a, perfume commercial um, which is why it's good to do a lot of like close stuff and far stuff and then you can just use it as more of a, a texture piece within your film you don't need like who cares when that portrait session happens like, like it doesn't it, it's it's just a art section it's almost abstract in the part of your day and then when you think about it these people aren't doing anything they're just faking being in love in a field for a period of time so you can include that anywhere in the film so i, I just like to give people the freedom to think about their portrait sessions a little differently um yeah anyway single day along the way my last and most important premise is to never stop loving you for who you are i love you That shot is long, and it has a bump. Blue dress. This is not like, I don't assume anyone's like an idiot or whatever. So I'm just, but in, in case you're like new to wedding filmmaking, one of the things you got to, shadows are blue, you know? So if you're shooting in a very, especially a time on day like this where the light is really, really warm, the second that couple gets in a shadow, it's going to look so, so blue. So you might have to adjust on the fly your white balance um, just so that, because the, the whole beauty of this is that it's warm. It's beautiful and warm, so you don't want to lose that when they step in the shadows. So all those dances, I'm wanting to see. I'm wanting to see um, another angle. So I'm wondering if if you had a camera, but I'm wanting to see some compression, like a longer lens. I, I think if you added a, I'm addicted to the 7200 at weddings. I think it's just it lets you do so much. It's so flexible. But I understand not everyone wants to shoot that way or has it. But I'm wanting to see like in out in out kind of like. Wide shot of them. You can, if you're cutting between the close stuff and the far stuff in these dances, it lets you pick up the pace and it feels a lot more energetic. This is a good example too. Something I would have liked to see. Um, having a tight angle as well it's it, there's a lot of gimbal all day and just get yourself a tripod and and use that for your wide shot honestly i think a lot of this stuff would look better on a monopod with like a tighter lens if you had a wide shot on a tripod uh, like i think it'd be a little bit or or even just like a 50 mil like maybe a, a mid lens on a gimbal um instead of this wide 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 angle because i'm just looking how empty this room is it's depressing i would have liked to see like 
something that add a little more compression and really isolated the couple and all that stuff. COVID weddings, man, they really, they do not like wide lenses. <laughs> great stuff right here it's beautiful you know really good um so yeah i will say if you see good like 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 this guys make your couple go say oh we should go let's go let's go make it exciting you know i know a lot of this is one of my pet peeves i'm gonna give it to you not and james you did a great job <laughs> i cannot stand it when I go to someone at a wedding, I'm working with a photographer, and I say, oh, look at that light. It's incredible. Let's take them. Let's do it. Oh, the couple said they're, I think they want to sit down. That couple is spending tons of money to have images of them taken, and you're ignoring the best possible light. Get some guts, because I promise you, I've never once walked up to a couple and said, look at that light. It's incredible. Let's go out there for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and add the couple and be like, no, we don't want to do that. No, it's just maybe they said like, oh, we're just going to party, and then they, they don't know. So, so coaching people and, and talking to them and explaining them, these are your best images. And like saying, my best images are going to be now. And that's what you're paying for, my best work. Let's go get my best work. Make it exciting for them. Make it fun. And of course, make it short. Let them go back to the party. But explain to them, hey, 10 minutes. Let's go out there. You know, you know one of the things I like to say to people is like, um, hey, 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 um, listen, you know, you haven't had any time alone. Let's, let's just go spend some time. Like, let, let, it will be a lot more natural. It's going to be your first moments together. But sell the session sell the session get the shots you need they will thank you for it later i mean obviously if they really don't want to do it you can't force them but i i haven't had many couples if i can't think of any that didn't want to go shoot incredible sunset stuff Oh, those blue lights are crazy. <laughs> I'm going to go back and show you what I would have done with this film right here. So this sequence right here, it's not so hot. You got footage that doesn't look that good not because i mean gross blue lights and just people being kind of boring i would have put this in i wouldn't have slow mode it i would have had all this stuff normal speed and i would have gotten in people's faces um with that camera and i would have been bum bum because you got that four on the floor beat and i would be cutting to that four on the floor beat with all these close shots of these people's faces laughing, having a great time in normal speed. I would have picked up the pace and really brought some energy. And then bam, that last shot. I don't love the logo covering the couple. It's just my opinion. Um, and it's a little flowery for me, but I'll show you. Watch. Kings and queens and cut, cut, cut. And just go crazy, tight shots. We're kind of just dragging. I would have liked to seen this a little more profiled too, because, um, yeah, and and I think bringing the logo in after the shot is better. I think just, 
Uh, I don't like it at the beginning of the frame. Great, great film. So in terms of just, uh, you know, you got... Um, you got a lot of good shots in there. I think the editing um, it could use a little polish. And, of course, we the blues throughout the film, I would just maybe warm it up a little bit. Um, and then this is personal preference for me, just so you know. Like, I know some people, maybe they're fine with it. Personal preference to me is I just don't like a lot of blue highlights in a wedding film. I think it's just opposite of the vibe you're trying to communicate with wedding films. Um I think just kind of working on your pacing. And um, I also think shooting the whole film, it, it felt like very samesy. It felt like you were shooting on the same lenses, doing a lot of the same moves, holding a lot of gimbal. I feel like locking down. If you add, if you could just add one more camera and one more focal length to your, sh your films, they will feel much, much, much bigger. And they will feel more intimate, and you'll have a lot more control of your edits. One of the things people struggle with when they're doing um, solo wedding is just setting up. And so I get all that. But editing is all about having stuff to work with and having multiple focal lengths when you're doing it um, changes your films. It will change your edits. And, and so I'm not sure... And I don't just mean like I got a 24 and I got a 28 to 70 and I got a 70. No, like... I got a 24, I got a 28 to 70, and I got a 200 millimeter lens. Like, drastically different focal lengths. Um, really matter. But also, like, people are handheld shooters that shoot 24, 50, 85, and then move their feet a lot. But just giving yourself a lot more um, different types of shots to allow you to go in and out throughout your film, I think will allow you to cut a faster paced film and give the film a little more life. So, that is my opinion. Um, yeah, uh, James, what do you edit in? People are asking, so. Uh, premiere. So this is a premiere film. So, yeah. Um, uh, okay. So let's check out the next one. Okay. So this film is by David. Focus Journey. Backyard. You're in my backyard, bro. Let me just make sure it's here. Nope, I clicked on the wrong one. Oh, wait, David. I couldn't include yours. I, I meant to tell you um, I, had, I had an issue with it. Maybe I'll, I'll try to find a way to get it. But I, I was having an issue with the film. Okay, I'm just going to skip to the next one, David. I apologize. If I can't get it to work, we'll do it next week. I promise. I'm sorry for, for the issue. Oh, no, no. Yeah, you, you didn't submit. You weren't on my list. You're not on my list. Um, oh, yeah, this is the one I couldn't do. Motion videography. Okay. Back to back to san sanity. I got. I know exactly what's happening now. All right. So motion videography. I wanted to include your film, but you just gave me a link to your website that was forward slash movies, um, and didn't tell me which film. And you also did not include the listings. Um, and I wanted to tell everybody we are going to be adding art list next week. Um, so if you have art list films, feel free to submit them. Um, and we will be, um, yeah, we'll be adding them. So yeah, I wanna, I wanna, I, I see no reason why we can't include more people in these film reviews, not just music bed people. Although we love music bed, and if you want a free one month membership, Jared will share a link in there. Sign up, get one free month on the music bed. If you're using Artlist, why not try music bed? It's really great. We love it. Um, but anyway, this is our last film um, that we're gonna be reviewing. Um, so this is Karina Gu Guevara, Simply K. Um, and so this is what she said. And this I, I love this. This is what this is all about, guys. This is what this is all about. When you 
helping people who are getting started. She says, I'm currently an intern for another wedding videographer. This is my first time allowed to film part of the ceremony, but I had to be in charge of another camera as well. I felt good about the variety of the shots. Um, I know my focus is either off or very light. I did use an ND filter for the first time that day. I may have impacted the focus on some shots that were sharp when I was not sure what that means when the filter was used. The filter also impacted how light and dark the shots were, hence the colors off in different shots in the video. Um, anyway, so sh this is an intern, and yeah. And I, and I believe, you know, I don't like to jump to conclusions, but I believe this is a female filmmaker, which we love, which is great. So here we go. This is Sipsuke Visuals. Ah, I blew it. I keep screwing this up. Guys, I'm an idiot. They say that when you love someone, you can't imagine living life without them. Do you mind if I ask, um, Karina, did you edit this film? If you're in this room, if you're in this room, um, just kind of say, hey, it's me. And if not, then just say nothing because you're not here. So, Okay, so I'm going to assume you're not in the room, but I'm going to just say off the bat, this is very home video-ish looking, just the movement on it. And so if you didn't edit it, okay. Um, but it looks like it was shot in 30p or something or 60 or whatever, but it's just got that video look to the whole film, and you're going to see it throughout. After meeting you, I realized that I never knew what truly living was. You bring out the best in me in every way. You help me love harder and forgive easier by giving me space to express my emotions and be whoever I want to be. You've helped me to love myself in ways that I never thought were possible. You take every up and down with a smile and remind me to put my hands up and just enjoy the ride. Jess, you have been my best friend from the beginning. Each moment with you has been truly special. As we continue to grow in our lives together, I promise that you'll never have to... So that's some weird sounding audio. Um, not sure what's going on there, but <laughs> it sounds really strange. Um, let's see if the mouth's matching up or if this was recorded after. Face this world alone. I already know that forever with you will simply not be enough. Okay, so we got some zombie skin going on over here. So I want to point this out. Oh, no. Stop, stop, stop. Wow, well, sorry. This thing. Possibility of it not working out. But I knew that I didn't want to live oh. life without a we'll just move on. in it. <laughs> and I knew that everything I was scared of. I'm a stickler for white balance. If you don't know Kelvin's, you need to learn Kelvin's. You need to learn Kelvin's. You you you, sh you shouldn't be. You're just not gonna ever be as good as you need to be until you can learn how to white balance. Just on the fly, looking at that and going like, I don't know, Mike. That's pretty blue right there, and and just knowing how to white balance in Kelvin's just by looking at a frame. That's your goal. So I would say, work on identifying that go test a bunch of different lighting scenarios understand when you need to cool it down and when you need to warm it up um yeah it was worth every second that i got to spend loving and being loved by you so from that moment on our love and life together has grown into the most beautiful forever that i can't wait to continue so here we are once again um i don't know if this is gimbal but i'm gonna show you some shots that so this right, if this is gimbal, then it's not set up right. And it's very, very footy. Um, like you can see you can see the steps on the gimbal. If it's handheld, yeah, my question is, I guess why? But um, but yeah, I would encourage you to just work on your uh, gimbal. Try to get it smoother. Try to really do, you know, the teal or the toe heel move, the heel toe walk, where you're kind of 
um, giving yourself less. But I'll show you guys just like it's got. And life together is grown into the most. This bob, or there's some weird stabilization on that. But it's just very bobby. And wait for yet another change <laughs> to our relationship. But this time, I have no fear. That's a cool shot. So by the power vested in me. That was weird. So you got like a micro shot in there. Oh, let's see. So by the power vested in me. That shot right there. It's like really, really just kind of in there of her fixing her hair or something. I, I probably wouldn't have included this or maybe made it longer if it was important for some reason. Because I like I like the face she's making, but yeah. Power vested in me by the state of Texas and the internet. <laughs> I now pronounce you Miss Emily and Jess Duran. You may now kiss your wife. You got to, uh, I noticed it in the one before, but he did it twice, so now I have to mention it. There's a lot of elements here bringing a lot of distraction. First thing is you got a off-center barn, and then you got off-center people, and then you're cutting people off. and you, Like, you got to direct this moment. You got to get your feet where you want to be to get the shot where you want, because when you look at a shot, your eyes are wanting something to be centered in you're wanting the weight of the frame to be weighted in a way that's telling a story. And these people are actually walking a direction that they're not even being led with your lead room. Like, I would just say, like, haul tail, back up, get the frame the way you want it. And if you, if you know you really wanted this shot, make them say, hey, guys, hold on, let me get in position. But um, this is an opportunity to kind of, just clean things up a little bit, and I think it would help a lot. Um, just, I know when you're when you're young, man, it, it, the hardest part is telling people to slow down. So this takes a lot of experience and confidence. Saying this is what I want, right? And I'm guessing you shot the best you could, but this is probably not the frame you wanted. In these moments, get the frame you want. Just nicely try to get the frame you want. I think it's worth doing. If the photographer's there, just shoot over their shoulder. So that is really weird looking. I don't know why. It's really... It's a little too blown out. I probably would have, well, I mean, a lot too blown out. I, I would have brought that down in just because it's messing with your sensor. I also want to say this. Lens flares look better on longer lenses. So if you're going for this lens flare look, it'll just look a little better. It's just, just I wonder what you're shooting on, I guess. Um, looks like Panasonic to me, but um, it's, either way, I just think... Um, yeah, missed opportunity kind of because it's a good frame, good shot, and it's kind of just like blown out. Like if you see the way the highlights are just blowing out, it's not in a pleasing way. Um, yeah, so anyway. Cool. Well, so I'm assuming um, that this is 
I don't even know if you edited the film because it seems like you're, you, you told me you're an intern. And the first thing I'll tell you is you've got skill, talent. Keep doing it. Keep working on your craft. Keep getting better. Go watch other awesome learning filmmakers. Um, try to learn from them. But also, um, just uh, – and if you didn't edit the film, I guess some of this advice doesn't matter. A little bit. It does, though. In camp – Jared and I run a company. We do uh, about 120 weddings or more. And the we work with our team about, eh, you, the average assistant before they lead shoot a wedding probably has done 30 assistant weddings where they've just carried bags and set tripods up. And, and like, so they're around it. And one of the number one things that we really emphasize initially when it comes to teaching filmmakers how to shoot is learning white balance. And I've seen them throughout, and I and I actually have heard not just in this chat through, on multiple Facebook groups and in multiple environments, people who are wedding filmmaking basically saying they don't understand white balance. And I'm telling you, learning how to eye your white balance and just look at it, you walk into a room, you go, okay, that's 5400 kelvins, that's 3800 kelvins, blah 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 blah. That will change your wedding filmmaking world. And, and so doing it in camera will change your post-production world. This, these are mistakes that people make that they're just, they're adding time to their wedding film editing that they don't need to be adding. And so like, I would encourage you all, learn how to white balance your camera um, manually in Kelvin's, not just you know by sliding it around. I get it. Sometimes auto white balance is fine. Um, but I'm telling you in general, the skill will be invaluable because it will save you post-production and it will let you, we have a rule with our company. It's like, get the look in camera, whatever you're trying to get, get it in camera. Um, we, to be honest, we didn't really use any LUTs for our films for like eight, nine years. We would just get the look in camera, put a little film convert on it very very almost no color from film convert by the way and just get a nice look in camera and given we're shooting canon so of course our colors are going to be incredible um but <laughs> i'm just kidding but also serious because it's true um but yeah i would just say guys um just work on that everybody here but it was a good film a lot of nice emotion um, these people were nice. So I would, when I look at it, I go, okay, so the cinematography, a lot of the gimbal stuff, very unintentional. Wandering gimbal is what I call it. It's just kind of wandering, a lot of footy, kind of bumpy gimbal move. Like um, the white balance was off a lot. Um, the editing was pretty clunky. I, I think, I think um, the pacing was good, though. It felt like it was moving forward. I liked that it was a short film. Um, and the shooting was very good. And, and, and so I think as you get more refined and you do it more, um, I think you're going to actually um, get a lot better. And I liked even that you took some time and did some of those details, those table details and all those things. Some of the audio was very, very rough. I'm not sure how it was recorded, but it, you know, when I, when I hear audio from like multiple sources throughout a film, some camera, some on the person, it really sticks out to me. It, really, it, it just takes me out of the film. So so I would say like doing your best to get like a lot of control over how you're capturing audio I think will really help a lot. So, yeah. Hey, yeah, so I would be – it's actually making me want to do this. So Jared, Jared next week, uh, Monday, the whole day, he's going to be making a film for you guys. No, I'm committing him to work. He never agreed to. But we, we, will, we will make a video about um, white balancing your camera. Um, because I think it's something that will help a lot of people. And it's it's actually a lot easier than you guys think. And people just get psyched up. Like, I, I train 21-year-old kids to do it all the time. We do all the time. And, like, our guys, they just are doing white balance like crazy. Um, Jared is awesome at training that. And so, um, yeah, we, we will make a, we'll, we'll make a tutorial on it. We will. In the next couple of weeks, it'll come out. But, hey, anyway, guys, like I said multiple times, this – Live stream is brought to you by the Yolo Box. Wonderful, wonderful thing. And like everybody who's made a purchase on our um, YouTube page, on our affiliate links, thank you so much for supporting Winning Film School. It means so much to us. One thing I wanted to point out: we do have coaching that's available on our website. So if you are a person who's looking to have one-on-one -on -one coaching 
on how to improve your brand, how to improve your website. We will do a 90 minute session. We'll go through your website. We'll talk about your leads and your sales process. And we will talk about your films. We'll kind of, kind of customize it to you. Um, if you're interested in that, we're offering a sale, $250 on our website. If you go to weddingfilm.school forward slash coaching, head over there and you can sign up. They're very limited availability because to be quite frank, I don't really have a lot of time. But I was like, I really want to offer this opportunity to get plugged in with the audience, even at a small level, so we can help some people out. So if you were like, hey, I really would like some coaching or some one-on-one -on -one film critiques, um, feel free to submit, sign up, and we will sp spend some time together. So I know the neon is off center. I know, buddy. I know. I'm just using this camera. I didn't want to redo the whole room. So... Um, Excuses, right? With filmmakers and our excuses. <laughs> so, um, but anyway, thank you guys so much for coming and hanging out on our live stream. We had a great time and um, love doing these. Next week, Bobby's going to be doing it. And actually, I want to point this out. We are moving our live streams to Thursdays, probably about 8 p.m., but maybe we'll see. We're moving our live streams to Thursdays. Um, and, uh, yeah. If you want to hang out with us next Thursday night, Bobby's going to be doing film critiques again, and he's going to be killing it. He's also, he's much nicer than I am. He's much nicer than I am. But also, he hates slow-mo more than slow -mo more than I do. I don't really care if you shoot your whole mil film slow-mo. Bobby will rip you a new one for shooting a whole film slow-mo. So, you know. But Bobby's hanging out, so we're going to be doing this next week. Thank you guys for so much for being fans of Wedding Film School. If you haven't liked and subscribed and hit the alert bell, do it. What are you waiting for? Come on. We're... Just do it right now. Have an awesome day, guys.